The new Rainbow River is over a week old now and in today's video we're going to go through what you need to do to your tank in the first week or so or after the first week at least. So we are now on day nine. Yeah, day nine since I first filled it up. Not since I added the fish, that was the following day if I remember rightly, something like that. Anyway, there's lots of good points, there's lots of bad points as well. Good points, all the plants are growing really well, including the moss. Let's start with the moss look. See it's got that darker sort of green to it and it's growing nicely. And then the Rotala macrandra look, see all that on the top there? That's all brand new growth, which tells me the lighting levels are absolutely perfect. We're nailing it in that department. Light, by the way guys, as you know, is provided by these LED spotlights. I'll leave a link in the description. I made a little custom bracket for them that goes on the wall. And yeah, it just works so well. Fish, fish are amazing. Colored up nicely, They're looking beautiful. Where's the uh, dominant male? Here he is, look. There is the dominant male sunset dwarf rainbow fish. Uh, his colors are way, way better. At the moment, of course, it's got a hint of red, but sometimes when I come in, it's dark red and it sort of changes by the hour, to be honest. I mean, the fact that there's like stuff on this glass at the front, it's dulling everything at the moment. We've also got this horrible sort of jelly stuff on all the wood. Now it's brand new wood, it's never been in an aquarium up until this point. Look at that lot down there. <laughs> yeah, so this happens to everyone, doesn't it? This is completely normal part of the process. We can just suck that off or brush it in a minute. And then down on the uh, on the substrate, look, we've got all diatoms as well. Again, easy to get rid of because we can just sort of stir it up and that itself will be enough. Generally, it's got like a sort of brown tinge to everything. That is the diatoms kicking in. Absolutely normal in a new setup, especially one with lots of quartz-based sand like we've used in this one. It's okay, it comes and goes. It's nothing to worry about at all. A lot of you will be panicked at this point. I used to panic at this point, and now I'm just like, yeah, it's cool. It's early stages, it's what happens. So as always, we want to start with that aquarium sort of glass scrape down. Some people use like the magnet thing. I use that sometimes, but majority of the time, I go in there with the razor blade on the stick. Let's take a look from the side, because you can't really see it that well um, from the front. But when you come to the side there, you can just see how much is on the glass. But look, come to the front, you can't really notice it, but it's got like a sort of haze to the aquarium. Let's get rid of that first of all, and then we can see exactly what we're doing. So even just scraping the glass has made a massive difference straight away. And the only real thing at the moment I can see that's causing a little bit of like ugliness is that substrate where we've got that brown diatom algae just sort of covering all of it. Now that's probably because the, the white substrate is reflective, isn't it? So it's generating more light on it than anywhere else. The diatoms seem to have hit that the hardest. Good thing is it's very easy to sort out. So to get rid of diatoms on the substrate, it's actually quite easy to do. You've got a few options. First of all, it'd be to vacuum off that top layer. Now that seems a little bit wasteful to me when all you really need to do is stir it in a little bit. The diatoms seem to be triggered by light. So by stirring it up and you know rotating the different layers, you bring fresh stuff to the surface and you kind of bury the diatoms in the layer beneath. This will obviously mean you block out the light from it and they'll just die off naturally. Eventually we're going to get to the point where the tank is settled in. I mean we are a few weeks off that stage at the moment but by doing this and getting rid as often as possible we can speed up the process. So already that is looking so much more fresh isn't it but what about this goopy stuff? I'm, I don't actually know what it is. Is it bacteria? Is it like a fungus? I don't really know. All I know is it's very easy to get rid of. Um, you just got to get in there and get on it. Now, once again, as with most things related to the fish keeping hobby, there are multiple ways to do this. You can get right in there with a little pipe and just suck it out. Or you can do what I'm doing here and use a brush and just go around and brush it all off. It's just like a soft bristled brush. Well, that was hard to say. Soft bristle brush. <laughs> yeah, just give it a good scrub. Now, the reason I'm not worried about it going everywhere is because we're about to do a big water change anyway. The tank's due one. It's only had a couple since I first set it up. I've been testing the water. It's all been good, so I've just left it. Let those tannins come out of the wood a little bit. You know, go through this grimy phase. I knew we are going to have a big cleanup. So now it's going to be time for a big, big water change. Yeah, we've currently got all these horrible bits floating around in the water column and they're getting locked up in the plants and that as well. So we need to make sure when we're draining the water out now that we're still wafting everything around because otherwise we won't, it'll just sit there. I don't think it would be harmful for it to sit there, but what's the point of leaving it when we can quite easily just get it out? 
But before that, there's still work to do. I want to get around like, for instance, if you look at this piece of Java fern there, this trident Java fern, there's like diatomy, stringy, fibery algae. I don't know exactly what it is, but look, if I just get in there like this, just waft it around, you can see it all coming up there and going into the water column. We want to do quite a bit of this all over the aquarium first um, before we, let me just zoom out. Ooh, this is hard, really hard one-handed. Um, yeah, there we go. We just want to go in every single plant and just use our hands everywhere because this is the first stages. Nothing's settled in, so these plants aren't going to use all this waste that's sat around in them. Eventually, it'll work its way down into the substrate, especially when we've got quarries and that kind of thing in here. But at the moment, it's all just going to sit there if we don't manually move it around. The, uh, the rainbow fish, which are all now currently hiding, uh, they don't go in and am amongst all these plants. They stay out in the open water, so they're not going to stir it up. They have to do it all by hand, which is effort, but you know, you want a nice planted tank, you've got to put in some effort sometimes. Again, this is only at the start. Like Later on, I wouldn't expect to be doing anything like this amount of maintenance, but that's all good. You've got to start strong to continue strong. Is That's not a saying, sorry. <laughs> so I now want to trim some of this moss here. I know it's not massively long, but if we don't, like get on top of it now it does start to get out of control pretty quickly and by trimming it at this stage and like look at how tight I'm going let me zoom in for you if you look at how tight I'm going to it there I'm not leaving any room for sort of scragglers or you know just wispy bits just coming off and if you keep it tight like this it grows into itself if that makes sense uh, and it sort of all interlocks and creates a really nice looking bed or just a, so smooth and cushiony <laughs> i know what i'm trying to say but uh, i'll show you in a minute an example of some of my other tanks but all these little bits coming off as well which i quite like they go around and find their own place again to sort of latch onto which means that we then end up getting more moss in lots of other areas of the tank as well and um, you, you've got to keep sort of on control a little bit because otherwise this will go absolutely everywhere <laughs> i mean that can look awesome in itself that's why i'm staying right on top of it this time because like you turn around and your whole tank's covered <laughs> and not in a good way either if it's covered and kept tidy it looks good but if you leave it and it goes really long and scraggly then it definitely doesn't look good right so far that's that whole section is perfect now if you're new to all of this then it can sometimes feel a little bit disastrous all my growth i've had in the first week and i'm cutting it all off but trust me this plant will definitely like java moss in general doesn't really matter what kind, just trim it regularly and it grows back looking so much better than you if you just leave it. Don't get me wrong, leaving it does have its own sort of look that can work well with a, a natural style, but if we're going for a more sort of like nature style aquarium, then it looks better to keep it cushiony, I think. If you're going for like a real natural look biotope, then by all means just let it do its thing and just rip chunks out of it every now and again. That can work quite well. So we're now in a really good place to take out a load of this water. I'm going to go for 50% um, and then whilst it's down, take out that little internal filter pad as well and clean that off um, in some of the tank water. That's why I love having a little internal filter because if I had a canister on this one, which don't get me wrong, they've got their place. If I had an external canister, I would just leave it and not do anything at this point because it's only been a week. Now, little internal one, you do some maintenance, you clean the filter sponge, it's just, it just works. <laughs> And that's what I love, look. We've now removed all of that waste from the water, you know, and that's one week's worth. And you know, if it's a canister filter, I leave it for months and it's all just sat in there. That's my own fault, obviously, not the fault of the equipment. But like this, look now, it's all still technically, you know, cycled media that's clean-ish, you know? <laughs> it's not clean, clean, but that you don't want to over clean it. You still want it to be sort of semi-dirty, but we're removing all the big chunks, if you like. We can put that back together again and stick it back in. It's 
so it's now the next day, the tank's looking beautiful, it's cleared up really nicely, and it's at this point usually where I do a big trim up on all the stem plants, but because it's only a week old, if I do that now, all that growth that's happening and nutrient absorption is just gonna stop dead and the algae's gonna take right off right off, just take off, really. <laughs> so yeah, what I'm gonna do is leave the stem plants for just a couple more weeks, let them grow to the top and even loop over a little bit, to be honest. The limnophila is already doing it, but it actually looks really good as well. It's getting some nice pink hues to the top parts of the leaves uh, because they're right under that light at the top. Now, one good thing is that when I do trim them, if they're looping over, I can replant them and they'll still be visible straight away again. So we'll have like double the amount of stem plants. That should look really, really good. And you know, with low tech tanks like this, now the reason I call this low tech by the way is not because it's um, cheap I mean it is cheaper than it would be if it was really complicated with all these amazing bits of equipment but we've just got like some LED floodlights and that internal filter that's why I call it low tech so some people get a little bit confused sometimes because they see an opti white tank and think that's not low tech well to me it is I mean let's face it the glass isn't the most expensive things in your tanks well it's not for me anyway we get these for pretty good they're like generic they're unbranded uh, they come over from China. They're well made though, don't get me wrong, but they're just, you haven't got like a little squiggly logo on the bottom. Um, so yeah, they're not expensive. Again, they're a luxury item, so they're not cheap either. <laughs> so obviously I do want to get a cleanup crew for this tank, but I'm just waiting until it settles down a little bit. I mean, at the moment, it, it wouldn't hurt to put them in there, but I just want to make sure everything's absolutely balanced. Things like a mano shrimp, that kind of thing, can be a little bit sensitive to water parameters, like swinging and that. The fish are absolutely fine because the, the changes are nowhere near big enough to affect them. What with like regular water changes, I mean, I haven't been doing those, but I have been testing to make sure that the parameters are staying within what I deem acceptable for the fish, and they completely have been. So I think another week or so, I'll go out and get the cleanup crew and the first quarries that I wanna put in here. I wanna do something completely different, completely new quarries as well. Well, so far with the rainbow fish, I have to say what an absolute pleasure they've been. So in terms of like behavior, first of all, they just group together all the time. Like, I don't know whether that's like a, def well, I don't think it's like a threatened thing because they're right here now, look, hello. <laughs> they barely know, know me, um, <laughs> but they're already like so comfortable around me. I'm right up to the tank and they're not darting off or being scared. So definitely not a skittish fish, or maybe it's because the setup is making them feel more comfortable and there's a good number of them. So when I got them, a few of the fins have been nipped, their back fins, um, that's all sort of growing back now. Don't worry, they will grow back if you are experienced that. When they're in the shop, they're in with some bigger fish, there would have been some tussling, that sort of thing. But yeah, that's all good. That's all gonna get healed and they'll grow back just absolutely fine. I was kind of expecting them to stay in their own sort of kinds because of size difference, that sort of thing. But the Bosmanis and the Sunsets just seem to mingle together constantly, which is really cool. I don't mind that at all. Like, it's, it's good to see. And to be honest, part of me was concerned that with such a sort of densely planted tank with loads of roots in and out of everywhere, I thought I wouldn't see them that often, but that's not the case, that they're always at this section. And it's so cool because like, you can, they interact with you. They really, really do. They're, they're behaving more like a cichlid, I would suggest. Um, they're just your normal sort of tetras and those sort of things, which kind of just do what they want and go where they want. They hide. If you go close, they might think there's some food, but they don't interact with you. But like, look at these guys, look, look at that. See, that's brilliant, isn't it? You know, they're fully aware that I'm here and they're not threatened, oh, it's awesome. So to summarize then, things you need to be doing in the first week. First of all, test your water every day. If you don't have a testing kit, I recommend that you do get one. You need nitrates, nitrite, and ammonia testing. Just make sure they're all within the sort of limits. If you can't afford a test kit, first of all, save for one, but if you can't in the meantime, just do 50% water change with dechlorinated water every single day. If you keep this up throughout the first week and the second week, by that point, there'll be enough waste going through the system, but also coming out at the same time, that you're gonna get the bacteria generated that kind of thing. Now in terms of algae and all the sort of initial ugly phases, we're gonna need to just get our hands really dirty. 
because in this phase nothing is settled in so manual work is you know the optimum way of keeping everything under control i literally actually went around each piece of wood with my hands and sort of just touched it all and brushed off anything that was sat on the wood and you saw what i did with the sand i stirred it all up by hand i cleaned down all the glass by hand everything by hand initially there's just really no other way to do it you don't need chemicals and that sort of things at this stage they'll, they'll have their part later on but for now it's just graft manual labor <laughs> and that's it basically guys stick to those basic tips you can't really go wrong hopefully this video has been useful to you if it has maybe consider clicking the like button subscribe button and i'll leave links down below to my shop if you're interested in getting some cool merch maybe a thick cory something like that and i'll see you guys on the next one